Hi, seventh graders. Today I'm going to talk to you about the human digestive system. So the digestive system is shown here in this diagram and it's made up of a whole bunch of different organs. Some are the main organs where the food actually passes through and some are the accessory organs that help digest the food as it passes through. The digestive system is basically one long tube of organs connected from your mouth to the anus where food comes in and then food goes out. The major organs of the digestive system are the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. Accessory organs include the mouth, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and the rectum slash anus. Functions of the digestive system are to break down food into small molecules that can be used by the body for energy. Remember, we cannot use our food inside our bodies in the state that it goes in. So we have to break down those those large food molecules into smaller molecules. The digestive system also converts the chemical energy in food into thermal energy, which is heat, and mechanical energy, which is movement for your body. And the final function is to absorb proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and send those to the circulatory system to go to each and every cell of the body. The digestive tract is a series of hollow organs joined in a tube from the mouth to the anus. Food passes through the digestive tract, as I already said. Here's another picture of the organs. As you can see, we start with the esophagus, we have the stomach, and the small and large intestines, and we also have the gallbladder and the liver and the pancreas included in there, as well as the appendix and then the rectum. So we're going to start with the mouth. Digestion begins in the mouth. Chewing breaks down food physically into smaller pieces, and the chemicals in saliva begin to break down sugars and starches chemically. So as soon as you put food in your mouth, digestion has begun. The next part of the digestive system is the esophagus. The esophagus is a tube of muscles that carries food from the mouth to the stomach. Muscle contraction moves this food down and that muscle contraction is called peristalsis. This means that you can swallow food and get it down to your stomach even if you're laying down or hanging upside down or even if you're an astronaut in space because it is not gravity that's pulling your food down, it is muscle contractions in your digestive system. The next part of the digestive system is the stomach. Two things occur in the stomach. First, a physical change happens to the food as the stomach smashes and squishes it around through muscle contractions. And second, a chemical change happens as digestive juices, stomach acid, break down the food into a watery soup called chyme. Here's a picture of the stomach. As you can see, it's lined with mucus and that protects it from the acid inside and there are two sphincters one at the top called the esophageal sphincter and one at the bottom called the pyloric sphincter these allow the food to come into the stomach and then go out once it has been turned into chyme The next step of the digestive system is the small intestines. The small intestines are 22 to 23 feet long, and this is where most of the nutrients of the food that you've eaten get absorbed. The intestines, the small intestines, are filled with little tiny microscopic projections called villi, and as the food passes over the villi, nutrients like carbohydrates, sugars, and fats, as well as vitamins, are absorbed. Those are passed into the bloodstream which can then deliver those nutrients to the cells that need it. Here's a picture of the villi. Inside the large intestine, which is only about five to six feet long, bacteria breaks down the remaining food. Minerals are absorbed and water is absorbed and what is left is waste that the body cannot use. Here's a picture of the large intestine. It is much shorter than the small intestine. The final destination for the food you eat is 
waste. So once everything that can be used by our body, nutrients, minerals, vitamins, and water are all removed, the only thing that remains is waste. This waste is moved through the colon and stored in the rectum and then finally released through the anus as feces, or you might know it as poop. Here is a picture of both the digestive, the lower digestive system and the rectum and anus. Let's talk about the accessory organs to the digestive system. We've only talked so far about the organs that food actually moves through, but there are several organs that help food get digested without ever touching it. The first one is the liver. The liver is a large organ that sits above the stomach and secretes a liquid called bile, which is used to break down fats. The next accessory organ is the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores bile produced by the liver and releases it when needed. The gallbladder can compact that bile into stones, which can make a person very sick. And finally, we have the pancreas. The pancreas releases juices to help break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. These juices go into the small intestine. The pancreas is also an important endocrine organ, which we will talk about when we talk about the endocrine system. That's the end of my slideshow. I hope that you guys learned a little bit more about the digestive system today.